I wonder if you noticed that over the last few years, something interesting has happened to our English Bibles. If you've looked closely, you've maybe seen they've become a little cluttered. Suddenly added to the Word of God, we've got notes, and we've got footnotes, and we've got cross-references, and all this other material. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but I think it's worth talking about. What we've seen over the last few years now is a bit of a pushback against this in what's being called a reader's Bible. Today I want to take a look at a few of the reader's Bibles that are available to us and talk about why that might be helpful for you. This video is made possible in part by Ligonier Ministries. Live in the U.S. or Canada and never contacted them before? Just visit ligonier.org reformed and they'll send you a free copy of R.C. Sproul's excellent book, What is Reformed Theology? Today we're talking about the state of the English Bible and how over the last few years or decades some clutter has crept into our Bibles. Many different features have been added. In fact, when we buy a new Bible today, we may go looking for specific features. Now each of these is helpful and yet each of them has in some way added something to the Word of God. Now I could describe this, it's probably easier if I just show it to you. So here's my, my trusty ESV, this is the Bible I've taken all over the world with me, the Bible I preach from. In fact, we're about to set off again for another uh, preaching trip. Let me open it up and I'll just show you some of what I mean. We'll open up together to the book of Daniel. So as we think about some of the things that have been added to our Bibles, well, let's take a look. First, you'll see that we've got two columns of text here. That's unusual as books go, and yet Bibles are often structured that way. You see at the top, we have page numbers, and off to the side, we have the reference. You see we have large numbers indicating chapters. We have small numbers indicating verses. We also have italicized numbers and superscript meant to indicate footnotes. And then, of course, we've got some headings as well. Now, of course, all of this has been added to our Bibles. None of this is the Word of God. It's all been added to the Word of God in various ways to help us. Now, let's take a look at another Bible. This is the ESV Study Bible, a giant Bible. You can see this one is pretty beat up. We've used it as a family for many years. Let me show you from this how even more features have been added to our Bibles. We'll crack this one open to the book of Isaiah, to one of my favorite passages, Isaiah chapter 6. So here we're looking at Isaiah chapter 6, and again, let's look at some of the features we've got. We've got page numbers at the top, we've got our reference off to the side, we've got chapter numbers and verse numbers, we've got headings, we've got our footnotes, and we've also got a column of cross-references. Then, of course, down at the bottom, we've got all these notes and even a table of information. Now, all of that is tremendously helpful and yet it's, it's noteworthy as you look to see that the, the actual words of God have been minimized. They take up just about one third of the page. The extra information has filled in even more than the word of God. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's still something that we ought to consider. It's still adding something to the word of God and increasing the features, increasing, we might say, the clutter in the word of God. Now I said that part of the pushback against all of these features that have been added to the Bible is the Reader's Bible. Well, here we have the ESV Reader's Bible. There are various editions available. This one is hardcover, covered in cloth. Very nice Bible. And what they've sought to do is to remove everything extra, reduce it almost right down to the very essence to simply the Word of God. And in front of me here, I have this other edition that comes from over here, the six volume set, which just a lot, it has the same thing, same features, but just expands it out a little bit by increasing it to six volumes. Let's take a look together at the reduced feature set in these Bibles. So let's take a look at these two different volumes that are an ESV reader's Bible. On the bottom, we have the one volume version of it. You can see it's been reduced all the way down. We have page numbers at the bottom. We have our reference at the top, and we have a chapter number off to the side, and that's it. That's all there is to this Bible. Now you'll see the pages are thin, so there's some bleed through, but that's just using thin paper in order to fit it all into one volume. In the second volume from the six volume set, you can see it's a little bit different. We have page numbers down at the bottom. We have the gospel according to John at the top. And then on the other side, we've got the most recent heading. And that's all, there's no chapter numbers in this one. And that's really it. There's nothing more to it. You can see the pages are thick, they're creamy, it's much higher quality paper, and a much more high quality binding as well. 
But you can see because it's been stretched over six volumes, it's a nicer font, a larger font, and then the spacing between the lines is stretched out as well. It's a very, very nice volume to read. It's just like reading a book, which is exactly what they were going for. Also for a short time, the ESV made available this six volume set. I believe it's out of print. You can still find it, but it's a little bit difficult to do. You might have to look at eBay or something else. This in the interior is exactly the same as this. The, the fonts, the layout, the pages are all the same, but this one is covered in cowhide. It's a beautiful set and came in this nice walnut box. But apart from that, it really is the same reading experience as this one over here. Now you might be saying, well, none of this does me any good because I don't read the ESV, I read the NIV. Well, wouldn't you know it, they've come through with their NIV Reader's Bible as well. And then they've also come up with this four volume set they're calling the NIV Sola Scriptura Bible. And if you look back to the ESV Reader's Bible, you'll see the layout is very, very similar between these and their ESV counterparts. If you read the NIV, you'll love these volumes as well. Okay, so why would you want to read one of these Reader's Bibles? Well, essentially, the great benefit is that they reduce the Bible back down to its essence. By taking away features, they actually add something, don't they? They remind us that the Word of God is first literature. It's first a book, and in many ways, it's meant to be read just like any other book. You can read it from the beginning to the end as a piece of literature, as a body of literature. Not only that, but you know that those headings and those chapters and those verses, all of those were added by people, well-meaning people, perhaps very godly people, and yet each one of them in its own way can actually detract from our understanding. It can impose an understanding on us. There really is joy, there really is freedom, and just reading the Bible without any of that stuff, without any of that clutter, reading it maybe a little bit closer to how it was meant to be read. There's still a place for those other Bibles, still a place for those other features. I use them all the time, but might be worth trying, especially this holiday season, might be worth trying to read the Bible afresh. Or maybe next year as you start a new reading plan, why don't you think about reading it through a reader's Bible, take away all the other stuff, and just be alone with the Word of God.